I was, um, I was on a podcast recently and someone asked me a question. Well, there's, there's public cloud, there's private cloud, there's multi-cloud, there's hybrid cloud. There's so many different clouds. What is distributed cloud? And, you know, I think this is sort of the evolution of where we're, where we're seeing cloud go. And, um, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about hybrid and, and multi in, in the past, but really in the last six to eight months, I've really seen a dramatic shift into what clients are demanding. They're demanding all these um, use cases that I, you know, described and this concept of distributed cloud, meaning, you know, public cloud, but distributed to lots of different um, environments has emerged. And I really like this um, definition in particular um, from Gartner. It says distributed cloud refers to the distribution of public cloud services to different physical locations while the operation, governance, and evolution of the services remain the responsibility of the public cloud provider. And I think that's kind of key. That's what we're hearing is that, you know, clients want a turnkey solution. They want this to be super easy and they want someone else to take that burden away, away from them. And so um, introducing the IBM Cloud Satellite, it is IBM Cloud services anywhere a client needs them delivered in one single pane of glass controlled through the public cloud. And one of the things I think is um, a little that we are, we're hearing is a little bit unique and, and really um, advantageous is that there's a lot of flexibility in the infrastructure that you can leverage. Um, so one, there's lots of different options. And one option is that you leverage your existing you know, infrastructure that lives in your data center today um, or you know, anywhere it resides, but you're, you're leveraging that in, you know, existing infrastructure. The second option is leveraging our global technology services um, at IBM. We have an amazing services organization and they can come in and actually provide infrastructure as a service to you in a turnkey solution and do it all for you. And then of course you can leverage IBM Cloud as one option um, for that infrastructure. And then we also have an appliance that is you know, pre-configured to run um, IBM Cloud Satellite. So you can, a little bit of a DIY solution where you can run that in your data center. And then finally, of course, we can run at the edge. So IBM Cloud Satellite is you know, enabling um, the flexibility to be able to pick where you wanna run and the kinds of infrastructure you wanna leverage. And then of course you can um, start to leverage other IBM Cloud services and then even content and middleware like IBM Cloud, pa Cloud Packs. So I talked a little bit about the use cases and what, what satellite is, but now I wanna pass this over to my colleague, Jason McGee, and he's actually gonna give you a walkthrough and a demo. So thanks, Brianna. I think that gave a really good view of the problems that we're trying to solve with IBM Cloud Satellite and this exciting new capability that we're building to uh, take the experience of public cloud that you know and love in, uh, in IBM and extend it in this flexible way to other physical locations where you might want to run it. And I thought maybe the best way to go a little bit deeper and help you understand um, what we're doing and what satellite can bring to the table is actually to show it to you. So I'm going to walk you through a quick de a demo of IBM Cloud Satellite. This is, of course, early. Um, we're, we're just entering beta uh, at this time with satellite. But I think it'll give you a good sense for the core ideas uh, that satellite brings to the table and how you might actually interact with it as a user of the cloud uh, to be able to take advantage of services anywhere you want them. So here I am inside of IBM Cloud in the new section that we're building around satellite. And this part of IBM Cloud's job is to help you define and manage satellite locations that extend the IBM Cloud and allow you to deploy services to them. Uh, the most important new concept that we're introducing is the notion of a location. Uh, a location is a collection of resources uh, outside of IBM Cloud's data center. So it could be in your data center, uh, it could be at the edge of the network, it could be anywhere you need them, in a shipping port, uh, in a distribution center, uh, anywhere in the world that you need to be able to land your applications or services that you want to consume from the cloud. To get started, of course, um, I need to create a location. And creating a location is actually really easy. Uh, it starts uh, with two simple questions. Uh, one is uh, the name of the location, uh, but the other is um, where you want this managed from. So with IBM Cloud Satellite, the IBM Public Cloud acts as the common control plane, as the management hub for managing all of those locations and the things that run in them. And so your personal location, let's say in your data center, connects back to IBM Cloud. And so you pick one of our major regions, um, like uh, Dallas, for example, as the place that you want to connect uh, and manage your location from. 
So now what I've done um, is I've created this location uh, and I've been quite as off defining it and standing up the resources that I need to allow me to start to leverage that location. Now, we're not gonna, uh, you know, in the interest of time, we'll uh, go and look at an existing location that I have, uh, and we'll use that as the, uh, as the base to build from. Okay, so here you can see in my account, I actually have a bunch of locations. You can see that that location we just created is in the process of being stood up. Um, let's look at uh, an existing location that we have uh, and take a look at the process to go from defining that location to actually making it available uh, for you to use. All right, so here you can see all the locations that exist within my account, and you can see that my location that we just created is in the process of being stood up. Um, but instead of waiting for that to finish, let's look at an existing location I already had defined. So we're going to look at this location called Port Raleigh. If you click on the location, you can see uh, that this location has been populated with a set of hosts. Well, how did I get here? Let's just walk quickly through the process of creating a new location. So I've defined it, and after it finished, I would land here. The next step in creating a location is you have to add some hosts to it. You have to configure some Linux machines to act as capacity to support running applications and services in that location. Adding hosts is really easy. You need a Linux machine, it could be a virtual machine, it could be a bare metal server, it could come out of your existing VMware environment on premise, uh, out of an OpenStack environment, out of physical servers that you have in your data center. You stand up those Linux machines, and all you have to do to connect them to satellite is run a script on them, which will register and connect them to IBM Cloud Satellite. To get that script, you click Retrieve Script. You can label those hosts so that you can organize them. You download this script to your machine, and you run it on those hosts. So let's say you do that on six machines. Um, those six machines will become available in the location. The next step is three of those machines need to be used to manage the location itself. So we need a little bit of capacity in satellite that allows us to manage the workloads that are going to run in your location. And so to do that, you configure those three hosts and you simply select from the six that we created the three that would be used to manage the location. In this case, I've already done that. And then I'm done. So at this point, I have a location that extends IBM Cloud. I've populated it with a set of hosts by running scripts on simple Linux machines. I've configured satellites control plane so that it can manage the location. And the rest of the capacity within that location is now available for me to use to run services on that location. Um, now, let's say I want to um, actually run a service on that location. Let's take something simple like OpenShift. How would I do that? So if I go to the OpenShift service within IBM Cloud, this is the service within IBM Cloud that runs OpenShift clusters as a service on your behalf. You can see here a list of a bunch of clusters that I have, some of which are in satellite locations and some of which are on the cloud. Um, if I want to create a new one, I simply hit Create. Um, I can create clusters on IBM Cloud or I can select satellite. Um, when I select satellite, I can then select the list of locations that are available to me in my account, um, like Port Raleigh. Uh, I give the thing a name uh, and I hit create and satellite will go and actually create that OpenShift environment inside the location and run it for me. So this is the same API you see on public cloud. It's operated as a service, um, just like uh, in, uh, in IBM cloud. We update it, we manage it, we maintain it. You simply consume OpenShift in that environment. And if I were to go look at one of those clusters like this one that already existed, I can see that this one is using two hosts within the location, uh, and I can access that OpenShift console the same way that I would access it in any other uh, environment that I'm running in. So it's a simple example of how we can get an OpenShift cluster up and running uh, within the cloud and within that location. Now, Satellite does some other interesting things for me, which I think are worth highlighting. Uh, one is uh, Satellite locations are connected back to IBM Cloud, um, that connection is managed and secure, uh, and we control all of the traffic that's going back and forth between the location uh, and the cloud. And you have the ability to configure and control uh, which uh, services are accessible from the cloud and from the location. You can control the traffic and who can talk to who. And so, for example, if I'm back here in the location, you can see I have a set of endpoints defined. Let's take something simple. Um, IBM Cloud provides a logging service. 
in satellite, we send all the logs for your applications on that OpenShift cluster I just created to the logging service on IBM Cloud. That connection between the location and the logging service is defined inside of satellite. You can see here I have that connection defined. If I click on that connection, I can see all the traffic that's flowing back and forth uh, to that specific service. I can see all the sources who are connected to that service. I can turn them on and off individually. So I have full control over exactly which endpoints are exposed in the location and on the cloud. And I can even audit all the traffic that's happening on that specific connection. And so I can go to my security team and I can show them exactly which interactions are happening and who is doing what. So all of those connections are managed for me. The final idea in satellite that's probably worth showing is the idea of configuration management. So I've created these clusters in this example, these OpenShift clusters. Um, I can organize those clusters into groups. So I can have, for example, a, a group of clusters for development and a group uh, for pre-production and a group for production. And then I can create configuration. So let's say I wanna make sure that all of the members, the developers building my logistics application have uh, the right set of, let's say, resource quotas on that cluster, the right access to resources on that. Well, I can define that as a configuration. So here I've defined a configuration for the logistics team. It actually has two versions. There's one version of the configuration that gives each developer one CPU and one gig of memory to use within the environment. And there's another configuration that gives them 10 CPUs and 10 gigs of memory. And then I can define subscriptions that say, for different groups of clusters, here's the configuration to apply. So you can see here for the development group, they get the one CPU version and the production group gets the 10 CPU version. And I can easily change that. So I can say, I wanna upgrade all the developers to 10. I change the version to 10 and satellite will automatically roll that configuration out to all the clusters that are in that group. So there's a powerful configuration management system built into satellite. It even lets me get a live view of all of the configurations that exist. So if I actually go look at those resource quotas, you can see these are the resource quotas applied to all of my clusters. If I dive into that cluster where you're looking at, you can see it's currently running version one and it was updated here. I can even get a full history of every time that configuration was changed on that cluster. So you have full visibility into all the things that are happening. So these are the ideas of satellite. You extend IBM Cloud with new locations. You can manage the, the network traffic within those locations. You can manage configuration of applications within those locations. You can provision services onto those locations and consume those services just like you were on the public cloud. We're even working on new services like databases where you can deploy databases into that location and you can manage those databases just like you're managing everything else on the public cloud. So hopefully that gives you a good sense for how satellite works and how you'll be able to leverage it in order to take advantage of IBM Cloud Services.